Round behind, uh -huh. and there were stays on either side Come on. of the place of the seat, mm -hmm. and two lines stood beside And on each stage. step, on one side and on the other side, he had a stack of a line. Mm -hmm. Read it. And twelve lines stood there on the Because it was six steps and two lines on each step. Read it. And on the other upon the six steps, there was not the light made in any kingdom. No other kingdom had a palace like some of his palaces. His throne was made out of ivory, but it was overlaid in pure gold. Mm. Six steps with 12 lines proceeding up to where he was sitting. Mm. The wisest man on the planet and the richest man on the planet. Mm. Read what the word said. And all King Solomon's drinking vessels were of gold, and all the vessels of the house of the forest of Lebanon were of pure gold. Now he wasn't drinking out of a plastic bottle on Wednesday night. <laughs> Y'all better help me. Read what it said. None were of silver. Uh -huh. It was nothing accounted of in the days of Solomon. Yeah, because silver didn't have a value. Why what the word says? For the king had at sea a navy of Tarsh Tarshish, mm -hmm. with the navy of Hiram. Once in three years came the navy of Tarshish. And his navy Tarshish. was so powerful, nobody ever counted it. And his navy only showed up every three years. Read what it says. And silver, Come on. ivory, and eight and peacocks. Read it. So King Solomon exceeded all the kings of the earth for riches and for wisdom. Read it. And all the earth sought to Solomon to hear his wisdom which God had put in his heart. Can you see what I'm showing you today? Here's a man that had the wealth of the world coming to him every year. We're going to see a little bit more in just a second. He had, he had it all out on display. He didn't trust in any of it. He didn't trust in one horse, one chariot, his gold, his silver, his cedar, nothing that he had. He trusted in God, because God had put wisdom in him. But he understood one thing. I may have peace on every side right now. He said, but my enemy, if my enemy ever see that I'm weak, my enemy will attack him. So Solomon for 40 years had no enemy to attack him. It wasn't because Solomon was good. God, the Bible said God gave him peace on every side. He had peace on every side because Solomon had a task of building God's house. And when you're trying to build God's house, a lot of times there's a lot of manipulation going on out there in the congregation through witchcraft and folks trying to manipulate other folks and cattle. He said, but in this new thing, he said, there'll be no witchcraft. There'll be no manipulation. There'll be no rebellion because witchcraft is the same as the spirit of rebellion. Read what he said. And they brought every man his present. Vessels of silver and vessels of gold and garments and armor and spices, horses and mules and rape year by year. Every year they had a rape of tribute. And they brought it every year, year by year. And the Bible said they brought every man, somebody say every man, every his man. presence. And it was vessels of silver, it was vessels of gold, somebody said garments. Armor. armor. They would even bring the implements of war. Spices and horses and new things that they needed. Read what he says. And Solomon gathered together chariots and horsemen, and he had a thousand and four hundred chariots and twelve thousand horsemen, whom he bestowed in the cities for chariots and with the king at Jerusalem. He had whole cities that were just dedicated to warfare. He was a man with no war. But he had a build-up, a stockpile of military and here we are, even in the day, Israel, God's same people, are not taking heed to what happened during the days of Solomon. They don't have the wisdom that Solomon had. We in our nation and other nations don't have the wisdom of Solomon. When it's peace time, you always prepare for war. You can't prepare for war when you're in war. And Solomon knew because of he had the wealth and he had the intelligence. He said, I need to prepare for war. He had cities on the outskirts of his border that was dedicated just for chariots and horses. Can you imagine the, 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 the logistics and all of the uh, keeping the horses fed and housed and all of the military individuals that, and all of it took to maintain that day after day, year after year. The reason he was able to do it, the Bible says every man every year would bring unto Solomon a certain rate of silver and, go, uh, silver and gold and other things that they had need of. But the scripture lets us know that Solomon, he needed great wealth to uh, keep the uh, level that he was trying to attain, in other words, to protect God's people. Read what the word said. And the king made silver to be in Jerusalem and stone. And Solomon was so rich that silver was just like rocks out on the ground. I'll say it one more time. Solomon had so much silver 
It was just like rocks out there on the ground. It lost its bag. Read it. And cedars made he to be as the sycamore tree. And the best of wood that the bugs and weather couldn't deteriorate, the best wood that they built with, it became like the sycamore, it became like the sweet gum, it became like a common tree. It was, he had it in such a plenty, it, it became valueless. Read it. During the veil for mm -hmm. abundance. Read it. And Solomon had horses brought out of Egypt Come on. and linen yarn. The king's merchant received the linen yarn at a price. Now watch this. Solomon in his wisdom, he's buying now these same things. These, uh, he, he's buying the horses and the chariot, and he's buying other things out of Egypt, but he's buying it at a set price. And read what it says. And a chariot came up and went out of Egypt for 600 shekels of silver. Watch this. Read it. And a horse for 150. Mm -hmm. And so for all the kings of the Hittites and for the kings of Syria, did they bring them out by their name? Y'all need to get this. What did he just tell us in this word? He just said right now in the 29th verse, the chariots came up out of Egypt for 600 shekels or 600 pieces of silver. Well, silver was almost valueless. He was getting it for a little or nothing. A horse was cost, costing 150 pieces of silver or shekels of silver. But a, a silver was almost a, a value, so he was getting it for a little or nothing. And then when he got it for a little or nothing, he was selling it to the kings of the Hittites. He was selling it to the kings of Syria. He was selling it, and the Bible said, and they did bring them out by what? Their means. By their money. Means. By their means. Their money, they were able to buy these things. Now watch this. When Solomon was selling to the Hittites, he was selling to his enemy. When he was selling to the Syrians, he was selling to his enemy. He had done all of this to show his power. He had done all of this to display his wealth. Sitting up on his throne of ivory, covered in gold. He had no fear of no man because he was trusting in God, not only to his military might, but he continued to build a military might. You gotta understand something. When God has placed you in a position of authority, you're gonna have to show forth your authority. We want to begin to walk in authority. We cannot walk in some kind of a uh, 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 law uh, uh, with our head down. Uh, like we don't know uh, what to do and how to lead folks. See, you don't lead folks by getting in behind folks, fussing at folks, and telling folks uh, the demeaning folks and trying to make them feel bad because they're not doing this. and doing. You, you, you lead people by feeding them. And you tell them to trust in God. Stop trusting in your job. Stop trusting in your friends. Stop trusting in your husband. Stop trusting in your wife. You need to begin to trust in the Lord. How many of you going to start trusting in the name of the Lord? Because the name of the Lord is how we're going to defeat our enemy. I'm not concerned about the Taliban and Al-Qaeda. There are people that are. And I'm telling you, they are in our nation right now. They're in all countries right now. Because people will not protect their borders. We're going to have to learn how to protect. Look to Solomon. Look to see what he did. Spend your money not on butter and beans and give it for butter and beans. We need some bullets and bombs. We're not going to trust in the bullets and the bomb, but it's going to take the bullets and the bomb for the bad guy. I wish that every Christian would stand up and tell the devil no. They're trying to cause. I heard it on the news just yesterday. They're trying to get, uh, especially through the Catholic Church, they're trying to get them to talk up this environment thing. And I said, listen, y'all y'all talk about that out there. We're going to talk about Jesus in him. And the pressure is now on for churches not to say things about certain things as it relates to on the secular side. But we're going to have to trust in God. I promise you, people are going to begin to come in church. Y'all listen to what I'm telling y'all right now. See, it doesn't happen in test camp, so you feel good. Don't trust in security. Yeah, we got all security every Sunday, but don't trust in that. You gotta trust in God. Amen. The day is coming, Jesus already warned you. Just what they've done to me, they're gonna do it to you. Amen. We're in that day. Can we open our eyes and see that? Yeah. We're gonna begin to trust in God, not trust in the building, not trust in the name. We can be having a good time Saturday, and the enemy can get it in his mind to do something. Amen. So while we out there eating cotton candy and, and, and doing whatever else we're doing, Pat's going to be looking. Amen. And I'm looking for somebody to fit a profile. Amen. I'm not going to listen to nobody tell me not to profile nobody. Because I'm not in law enforcement. I can look at it. I profile you if I want to. Amen. Amen. See, don't lose your intelligence here because somebody else is going to be politically correct. Right. We're in a dangerous time. The Bible said we're in perilous time. Amen. We need to start trusting in Jesus. I'm not trusting in the military. Of the military not fight like they should be fighting. Because if I go to the military, that president's gonna be driving.
I'm the right man. We don't have enough Christians in all. A true Christian would be fighting. See, now I'm all from about right there. See, we don't have to fight one another. You turn your cheek, if I strike you, you turn your cheek. But when it comes to a government and a country and a nation protecting a nation, that nation is going to fight for you. And the only way you can stop your enemy is do what the Bible says with the right hand of God. What did God do to Pharaoh? Israel didn't fire one shot. But Israel was obedient. Moses said, y'all stand still. He was there standing still. When they stood still, he said, now you can see the salvation of the Lord. As long as they were panicking and had tears. Moses said, do this for me. He said, now, look behind you one more time. He said, look, you get to you see. After the day, you won't see him anymore. But God did it. And they got still. And they look back anymore. Even though they heard the chariots. They heard the army coming after them. But they didn't look back anymore. You remember what Lot's wife did? She looked back. See, what we're going to have to do is, even though the enemy on our track right now, he's in our country right now, he's in our nation right now, we're going to have to be firm enough to realize God's going to take care of us. But God's not going to take care of us. I got a loaded gun and I see the bath and I won't shoot the bath. David said when I was behind, I was tending to my father's sheep, a bath come up and all that hunt come up. You're supposed to protect the sheep. Right. You can't protect the, the, bat, the, the sheep from the bath. I said, oh, hey, not Mr. Bath. Right. <laughs> don't, don't get the sheep, Mr. Bath. The Bible said he took a slingshot and he hit the bath. He said if he would turn it a loop, that would be the end of it. He said, but if he hit the, the bear and the bear turned on him, he said, then he killed him. Yeah, yeah. He wasn't just talking about in the neck. He was talking about, I mean, in the, in the natural with sheep. He was talking about, so David became the king of Israel. And the Bible says he was a man of war. Somebody say a man of war. But he was a musician. He was a man of war, but he was a musician. He wrote a lot of songs. He defeated a lot of death. You read the Psalms, he defeated a lot of spiritual demons through music. But the physical devil, like the lie, he stood up on top of him and took the sword and cut his head off. The first prophet in Israel was named Samuel. And Samuel was a long prophet. He had a sword, the Bible said, in his sheath. And the Bible said when Agag, after uh, 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 Samuel had told uh, Saul, he said, now, I want, God said, I want you to destroy everything in the, the, uh, of Agag when you go over there into his country. He said, he even kill him. That's what Samuel told him. And he got over there and, and, and Saul kept some of the sheep. And, Sa and Saul kept the king alive. And when Samuel showed up, he heard sheep over there back. He said, what's that I hear? What's that I hear? He said, well, Samuel said, well, I mean, Saul said, well, I kept some of them so I could sacrifice it to God. And Samuel said, it is, it is, it is better to obey. Yes. 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 Uh, uh, obedience to obey is better than sacrifice. Yes. And the Bible said he pulled his sword out. And he walked up on King Agag. And the Bible said, cut him in four pieces. Somebody said four pieces. Y'all not in there with me. Don't there by myself. Y'all better get on that day. Not only with the word of God, but defend your families. Defend your country. That's why we have no military. That's why Israel had an army. God was with Israel's army. When Gideon had 30,000 men, and God said, you got two men. And he went down to 300. And gave Gideon a victory with 300. God's mighty right, right hand was in the mix. See, God going to fight the battles that he has to fight for us. But you did not sit up here and just try to wish stuff away. Some of us, I'm too old now. Some of us need to join the military. We got some members that join the military. They're going off to the airport. They're going off to the marine. Why? To fight the bad guy. Because the Bible says, when the good men do nothing, evil men will prosper. But we as good for do nothing. I'm just going to pray for you, brother. Uh-uh, I'm going to send a prayer to that, you. Y'all not in here with me. Right. See, the mentality is we thinking that when it says, thou shalt not kill, that's talking about just killing children. But that's talking about murder. It's when, when Sergeant Billy Jones 
brought down on the bad guy, and the bad guy drawing down on him, and Bill Donald is passed on the draw, and he dropped the bad guy. He didn't kill the man. He didn't murder him. That's the word in the scripture. He may have taken the man's life, but it's called justifiable homicide. Y'all really quiet.